In this video, we're gonna talk about boundaries for beginners. And we don't realize sometimes we put boundaries in place subconsciously, but when you're aware of it and understand it, you can start to put in your conscious mind, which means you can put boundaries up first and fast and up front instead of waiting for things to happen to put those boundaries in place. But before we do that, let's do the intro first and then content after. See you in a bit. Boundaries, boundaries, and boundaries. Now, boundaries can keep you from hating the person next to you, but also can keep you from hating yourself. Before we talk about more in depth with boundaries, let me tell you a bit about my channel. We have a whole slew of things. We have relationships. We have single dad. That's who I am, what I am, and what I'm about. We got personal growth and attachment theory. Now, this really goes more into the personal growth perspective, but can lean a little bit into the attachment theory also. But Let's go right into the boundaries perspective. Like, what is it? So what are boundaries? Now, I heard boundaries all the time, like definitely in the most recent years. Boundaries on Instagram, boundaries on Facebook, boundaries with people I just came across with. But as I looked more into boundaries, I started to truly understand the importance of it. And I started realizing that I already have boundaries in place in my subconscious, but also have boundaries so high up in some situations that it prevented people being close, which caused me harm. But also I had a lack of boundaries in some other areas. But by understanding boundaries, you can really be very beneficial to understand yourself and be more in your conscious mind of protecting yourself and not maybe protect yourself too much. So UC Berkeley has a definition and it's right here. What are personal boundaries? Personal boundaries are the limits and rules we set for ourselves within a relationship, right? And that could be any type of relationship involved. And so you have different boundaries with different people. You have a certain boundary with your kids compared to a certain boundary with your real loved ones. And, and sometimes as you build relationships, some of those boundaries could actually not be as hard because the more trust you get involved. And so if some of those boundaries are just hardcore stuck in place but the thing is you understand usually people who are avoidant and we talk a little bit about the attachment styles avoiding people have a huge boundaries to a point where it can almost be a point where it's a hindrance which i had that problem but then you also have who are anxious and people who don't even have boundaries because of they're always trying to get approval from the outside world but I mean, please look at up, up, I have a great video that breaks down attachment styles and really breaks it fundamentally. So you have better understand what I'm talking about when it comes to there, if you're interested. But if not, let's go into the types of boundaries because there's there is six of them. There is physical, there's emotional, there's sexual, there's time, material, and workplace, all right? So all six of these will combine in some part of boundaries that are in place. So let's start with the first one, okay? Let's start with physical. Physical boundaries could be like giving a handshake or giving a hug. Those don't want to do those things, right? And I feel like a lot of those boundaries are not really taught to our kids properly. And we're like, go give Uncle Jojo a hug. But they didn't want to, and so they forced themselves in situations, and then now they don't know that they can actually tell people that they don't want to give you a hug. So being healthy and understanding situations of their kids can also prevent this from having a problem. But if there's a problem you have right now where you do really don't want to give a hug or really don't want to give a handshake, what you can do is you can let people know is like, hey, I really don't do these things, but well, it's really nice to meet you. Or, it's nice to see you. Or I'm really not feeling in, uh, really being hugged right now, but I appreciate it. Right. So being able to verbalize it, not to say it's them, but it's really just something that you don't do, and then setting those uh, boundaries in place properly. Emotional boundaries. Now, emotional boundaries are usually when people say something to you that you didn't really appreciate, right? So when you have an emotional boundary and somebody says something, an unkind name to you, like you're a beep, beep, whatever case can be, you really don't know until after the act has happened that it was okay, that was a boundary that somebody crossed. And when you're in a heated argument sometimes, it's hard to truly stop that person, truly understand what's going on. So usually when you calm down, you can be up to the person and be like, hey, this emotional boundary um, that you did, I, I don't appreciate it. And I won't treat you like that. And I expect you not to do it with me. 
But again, if they start to cross those boundaries again, then you need to partly start separating yourself from that person because they're not respecting your boundaries, which means what other boundaries would they not respect? And then you have sexual. Now, the reason why these three here are the first ones because usually these are like the core staples, but you have sexual perspective, which is, is better to set these boundaries up front in relationships or in any type of encounter you have so they're aware of what you're willing and not willing to do and so you won't feel bad about your boundaries being breached and usually you won't feel bad with the person you'll feel bad that you didn't say anything yourself right so time time could be another boundary like you'd be at work and this might go into workplace also but your time is, inv is valuable if somebody is wasting your time or coming late or they're flaking on you or if a, a boss is like, hey, can you stay past five o'clock to six o'clock? They're not really respecting your time boundaries you put in place. And so you really need to speak up about those things. If people are late, let them know that you don't appreciate people being late. If that's something that really bothers you, if somebody flakes, if you you spent time to be somewhere and they didn't show up and you wanted them to be there. Being able to speak about those things and set your boundaries up in place can help you be like, if they keep doing it, it might be situations where, okay, you don't respect my boundaries, so I need to start separating myself. Material, that could be like a car. Like say your material boundaries, like you let somebody borrow your car, and then and this is really gonna be more from your side. And when you're speaking about giving the car, you need to let them know how you want that car returned. Hey, I'm letting you borrow the car, please bring it back as clean as you had it and wash the car or whatever expectations you have to make sure that they're aware of what's going on and then now they have at least an expectation so if they come back in a certain way if that wasn't the way that you wanted to be returned now you can be like okay you know what i'm not letting you borrow anything or if they bring it back where you want to now you're like, okay you respect my boundaries maybe i might be willing to give you my jet i don't have a jet not yet and then you have a workplace that can happen in a lot of different ways. If somebody puts a workload on you in a situation, a lot of people have a problem saying no like because they want to make sure that they are worthy and they can prove themselves. But it's okay to say no. And I've been in situations before when I feel like I was Superman and I said, I can do it, I can do it, but then I overwhelm myself and then I, not just, I, might, I may be able to finish it, but then other relationships in my life start to suffer. And so I realized I started saying things like, hey, you know what? I know that you want me to do this extra work at work, um, but I have this project, this project, this project done. I can't really get this other project done in the time that you want to. I may be next week in two weeks. Or if it's, say, it's a boss that tells you to do it, out of these three things, do you want me to replace something I'm doing with something that's more urgent? And I think if you give them expectations about what's going on, they'll understand, oh shoot, you really got work to do. You're not one of those people who are just saying, I'm busy, 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 but don't want to give them any tangible. So what I would do, I always have a, in my office, if you don't have an office in your desk, I'll have all of them written down. So when you get situations thrown at you, you can kind of pull it up easily and be like, well, I got these seven projects doing right now. Is this a bigger priority for me? And if it says yes, you do it. But now he at least knows that you're going to, the other things you have to get done may be pushed out longer. So those are the, those are the six boundaries that are, could be in place. And there's different examples that can be associated with it i kind of gave you some answers too of how to actually resolve those boundaries and it's huge because if you don't do it you'll you'll, you'll either resent the person for breaking the boundaries or you'll resent yourself for not speaking up and telling people about your boundaries so let's go into the importance of these boundaries right go into more detail with it number one you have a stronger sense of identity greater self-esteem, avoidance of burnout, positive influence of others' behaviors, develop independence, greater sense of compassion, mutual trust and respect, and also less anger and resentment. Now, with anger and resentment, that is a huge part. Like, I feel like a lot of problems come from any relationship is built up resentment. If somebody encroaches on a boundary that you didn't set yourself or somebody encroached on the boundary, it makes you feel a certain type of way about that individual and that resentment may build up and you may actually find problems in that person that may not be the real reason why you're upset but subconsciously you just feel like a boundary has been breached and you'll feel uneasy in the situation that goes back to unmet needs please check out unmet needs as a great video um it's a source of resentment it actually helps you understand a lot of like like what your boundaries are really made for it's really to help you make sure your needs are met and needs are kept safe and that video can really can go into more detail with it 
Um, but also communication needs to be a huge component to boundaries. So like if you don't communicate what's going on, like communicating your needs and your boundaries, which again, needs and boundaries are so close together. Please watch that video. But if you don't communicate the boundaries, what happens is people don't, are not aware of it. And then you can start to build these resentment for these individuals without realizing that it could be easily fixed in the front end by just setting proper boundaries instead of causing problems down the road because of a lack of brown you set in the beginning. Now, a final thoughts. I mean, outside of understanding the six boundaries which we talked about and things you need to take in consideration to potentially put those in place for yourself, you need to understand that time is important. If you're in the act of something that you feel you can be able to put the boundary in place, put it in place. But if it's like an argument that if you actually bring a boundary in place, it may actually worsen the, the argument in that point in time, then maybe waiting afterwards when things are cooler to have that communication until you can feel comfortable with that relationship to be able to set that boundary in the midst of the argument, which could be very difficult to, to do. The second thing is, is like don't overuse boundaries. Boundaries could actually be put up so high to prevent your relationships with people, which relationships with people are important and we all need them, but also they can help you look at your blind spots that you don't realize. If you do things on your own and feel like you can do things on your own, you have problems with being able to fix things that you can't see. They say that women have it better because women, when they go on dates or things like that, they all talk to their friends and they'll tell them things they messed up, mixed, and have problems with. But the people who actually put a boundary mostly are men. And what happens is men are lone wolves. They don't talk about their emotions or anything like that. And so what happens is it can be problematic. And the third thing is understand the origin. I have another video called Emotions, um, the core of your beliefs. And some of the emotions can help you understand what boundaries are not being set in place so you can start to put those in place also. So check that video out too to understand a little bit more about how emotions can really ever be a good signal to actually understand the beliefs and what's going on to help set proper boundaries on the back end. But again, guys, I appreciate you. Please like and subscribe. Thank you for staying this far if you have. I love doing this content. I'm trying to get better. So please let me know if there's anything in the comments that I can do to improve. But again, I appreciate you in general just to, to look at my content. And as I end all of my content, if you have kids, because me being a single dad, I understand that life is busy. But slow down and give your kids a hug because they desperately need it. And sometimes we don't realize how much time has passed since the last one we gave. But until next time, see you in the next content and have an amazing day.